All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to actually make our NPC start doing things. So we're gonna make it so that we have this context clue that pops up when we see our NPC. And then we're also gonna make it so that if we are in the NPC zone and we press a specific key, the canvas is gonna activate. So let's jump right in. Okay. Believe it or not, this is the fourth time I'm recording this video, but let's take a look at where we left off. So we created this UI, and the UI is composed of a panel that has two scroll, re oh, scroll views inside of it. Uh, one is just for the dialogue itself, and the other one is for buttons, which we're gonna use for choices inside the dialogue. Currently, it's just active. Uh, we want to, by default, have this be inactive. So I'm gonna go to my canvases, grab my dialogue canvas. Let's just do the whole canvas and turn it off by default. Now, what I want to do next is I want to have some way, let's go over to our scene view, some way for my NPC here to communicate with the canvases to turn something on and have it set, you know, what the dialogue is going to be. So uh, what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to create an intermediate value that's going to hang around behind the scenes that the NPC will be able to change the value of and then the uh, canvases can choose the value from there. So in my scripts folder here, I'm going to open up scriptable objects. I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call this text asset value. And then I'll open that up. Now a text asset value can be anything from a plain old text file. Uh, it can be a JSON, which is what we're going to be using or any other rich text format. So what I want to do here is I want to make this a scriptable object so it can hang out in the background. So we're going to inherit from scriptable object instead of mono behavior. And then uh, we're going to use the create asset menu. We're going to give it a menu name. Is going to be scriptable objects. Oh wait, that's wrong. That's better. Scriptable objects slash uh, let's do new dialogue value and then we'll give it a file name equal to we'll just call this new dialogue asset I don't need starter updates so I'm just gonna get rid of these all this is gonna do is just hold a um, a reference to that text asset. So this is going to be a public text asset that I'm just going to call a value. And then we don't need collections or collections generic. So there we go. Pretty simple script to start us up. Now if I go back into Unity here, I'm going to wait for that to compile. And then we're going to take a look at the scriptable object folder. And inside the scriptable objects, I'm going to make a new folder specifically for dialogues. So I want to create a new folder. I'm going to call this dialogues and then inside here I'm going to make a scriptable object that I just created. So inside scriptable object I'm going to do a new dialogue value and I'm just going to call this like um, we'll just call this dialogue. All right cool. Now I want to have a script on the NPC here that can detect when the player is there and if the player is in a certain range uh, I want to pop up a context clue on the players. So the player knows something's going on. And then I also want to check to see if there's any input. And if there's a specific input, like say check or interact, then I want to activate that dialogue canvas. So I'm going to be taking a look at my scripts here and let's make a new script for our uh, dialogue NPC. I'm going to put this in my generic component folder inside my scripts inside generic compiler or generic components I'm going to create a new c-sharp script and I'm going to call this dialogue NPC and then let's open this in Visual Studio now the dialogue NPC needs to have a reference to a few different things first it needs to know what its dialogue is it needs to know what the scriptable object of its dialogue is and it needs a notification to send out when the player's in range. Now we already have a lot of the stuff that we would need for this from earlier in this, uh, this tutorial system. Uh, if I take a look at my generic components, I have an interactable script here. 
And this interactable script allows me to check to see if the player's in range. So if something enters a trigger, uh, checks to see if that's the player or whatever it's looking for. And then it raises a notification about that. So back over here in my dialog in PC, I can gain all of that behavior by just inheriting from interactable. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, now, if I save this and go back into Unity, I'm going to grab my dialog in PC. And inside my dialog in PC here, I'm going to grab my uh, game object I made as a child that has the box collider on it. That is a trigger. And I'm going to add to it my dialog in PC script that I just created. Now, I, it'll tell me if the player's in range. I need a tag to look for, which is going to be player. And it needs a notification. And that, I think, is in player. It's the context clue notification. Nope. Oh, because it needs to actually be an object. It's your taft. So I'm looking for the context notification. There we go. So now if I save this and hit play, I should automatically get that little context clue popping above the player's head. And we covered this in an earlier video. But let's check to make sure it works like I think it does. Cool, so there we go. Now, what I want to happen next is when I press a specific button, I want to change the value of that text asset. So, oh wait, I got a null reference exception here. Oh, it doesn't have any listeners. Oh, <laughs> spoiler alert. This is actually the fourth time I've done this video. So I'm going to remove some things that I've already made here that do not need to be here. All right, so there we go. That's what that was. It's spoilers for the future. We'll get there. All right, so now I want to go back into my dialog in PC and I want to add a reference to reference to the intermediate dialog value. And that's going to be the text asset value. So this is going to be a serialized field, private text asset value and I'm gonna call it my dialogue. I wanna make, oh, no, this is gonna be like the intermediate one. So that's not gonna be my dialogue. It's gonna be like, uh, I'm just gonna call it dialogue value. I'm gonna make another reference to an actual text asset. And this is gonna be my dialogue. So this is the NPC's actual dialogue asset. And I was commenting things, so I might as well continue commenting. So I'm going to say uh, reference to the NPC's dialogue. And then the last one is going to be a notification to send to the canvases. To activate and check dialogue. All right, so this is going to be a serialized field, private notification, and I'm going to call this one branching dialog notification. So now I already have um, a Boolean value about whether or not the player's in range. So in my update method here, I can check to see if the player's in range. So if player in range, and then I can check to see if a specific button is pressed. Now, I already have a button pressed for check, which I'm going to use for dialog. If I go back to Unity here, here's how you can check your, um, your inputs. This is using the old input system, not the new input system yet. So if you go to Edit, Project Settings, and then in here, go to the Input Manager, you'll see a certain number of axes. If you want to expand that, Currently, I have 22 axes. If you need to make another one, you can just make another one. I have a button that I call check, and check is going to be left shift, but I need to remember exactly what I called this. So it's capital C check. So back in Visual Studio, I want to check to see if input dot get button down check. Then I want to send out the notification. So 
branching dialog notification dot raise. And before I raise that, I want to also change the value of the dialog. So I also want to do dialog value dot value equals my dialog. I want to make sure I'm doing that before I raise the notification so that the canvas doesn't try to check something that doesn't exist yet. All right. Now I feel like I should also have another check here just to see if the dialog is already active, but we'll clean that up later. All right, so for now, I'm gonna jump back here. Let's turn that off. And on my dialog zone here, I'm gonna fill in some values. So first I'm gonna fill in the text asset. So if I go to my dialogs, I'm gonna give it text asset value. I made a dialog for the NPC, and this is in the dialogs folder inside the character one part. Now inside here, there's two files. There's the ink asset, which isn't what I'm looking for. Instead, I'm looking for the uh, .json file. So if you click on it, you can see it's .json. So I'm gonna pull this into the text asset. And then the last is a notification. So I'm gonna make a new notification for this. So I'm gonna create scriptable objects, notification. I'm gonna call this branching dialog. Now back on my dialog zone, I'll add that as my notification. All right, cool. Now, uh, what I wanna do next is I wanna have another script to control turning this dialog canvas on and off and also setting values on the canvas itself. So I'm gonna grab my canvases here and inside my scripts in my UI, I'm gonna make a new script specifically to control that. So I'm gonna create a new C sharp script. I'm gonna call this branching dialog controller. And I'm gonna open this up in Visual Studio. Now, this needs to have a reference to a few different things. First, it needs to know what the canvas is so it can turn it on and off. So we'll make this a serialized field, private game object, and we'll call this branching canvas. It also needs to know, um, it needs to know the canvas, it needs to know what the prefabs are for the dialog and the buttons. So serialize field, private game object, and we'll call this um, dialog prefab. Serialize field, private game object, and we'll call this choice prefab. It also needs to know what the um, the intermediate value is. Serialize field, private text asset value, and we'll call this, we'll just call that dialog value. All right, now I'm just gonna create a really simple method here just to turn that canvas on and off. So we're gonna do a public void. We'll call this enable canvas. And what this is just gonna do is just turn that branching canvas on. Branching canvas dot set active true. All right, so there we go. Now I'm gonna go back into Unity here and I'm not gonna put it on the dialog canvas itself. I'm gonna put this script instead on the object that holds all the canvases. So I'm grab my branching dialog, put it there. Now it needs to know what the canvas is. So I'll set that. It needs to know the dialog and choice prefabs, which we set last time. So inside here, yep. So we have the dialog prefab and we have the response prefab. And then it needs to know the dialog value, the scriptable object I just created. So set that. All right, so now all of that is set. This also needs to now know to listen for a notification. So I'm gonna add a notification listener and we're gonna grab the branching dialog notification. I'm gonna create a new response to it. It comes from the dialog controller. We're gonna be looking for enable canvas. Now there's a few problems that are gonna come up with this, but it's a good start and we can finish this in the next video. But for now, if I go over here uh, into the next screen where the NPC is, you can see I get that context clue. 
And if I press left shift, you can see the dialog canvas was created. Now, just to prove that this is actually changing the dialog value, if I click on my dialog scriptable object, you can see it's now set to be the text asset that the NPC had. So now I can use the ink runtime to unload the dialog boxes and the dialog choices as we go. Now, there's a few problems with this. One of them is if my player walks away, <laughs> nothing happens. So you don't want to have your player continuing to have a dialogue with a character who's, you know, three, four screens away. Um, and also we need to have just a way to disable this anyway, but we'll get to that. Uh, for now, we've created a situation where our NPC knows what information they're sending to the canvas. The canvas is receiving a signal from that and turning itself on. So we'll continue this next time. I think there's one, maybe two more videos in this, and then that'll be it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys are having a great day. And yeah, we'll see you later.